son. Yeah, the, the one that you have to get. Olivia Rodrigo and um, Taylor Swift. There have been rumors of an Olivia Rodrigo and Taylor Swift fallout for quite some time. I've pretty much been aware of this rumor since it first began after the success of Sour, Olivia's debut album. You know, it's not something people necessarily want to hear given their past alignment, but the stuff that's been speculated on does seem genuinely believable. I remember the week of Sour's release, Swifties attacked Olivia for sending a PR package of her album to Northwest, which is ridiculous and also says something about stan mentality and how some stans feel they have the right to police certain aspects, or expecting young Olivia to take on a beef that's not hers. I found it utterly ridiculous, and I did not like any of the backlash she got for that. And if I was in Olivia's shoes, that definitely would have been a wake-up call for me to distance myself from someone like Taylor Swift, because her fans and her are just a towering amount of influence. And at the end of the day, I'm sure she wants to be seen and viewed as her own artist. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, never listen to any one of those, one of them's music, especially Taylor Swift. I never listen to her music, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I never listen to her song. Even when I was a, like a kid, bro, I never listened to her song, bro. And I really never listened to Olivia Rodrigo. I never really paid attention to Olivia Dr Rodrigo. I think I heard her name like once or twice. And that's about it. But, you know, I never listened to either one of them songs. Not just a little Taylor Swift minion. Olivia even did promo for Taylor's Fearless re recording, where Taylor referred to Olivia as one of her kids, which was definitely beneficial, having Taylor Swift post her at the time of her own commercial breakout. But at that point, you know, things could come up a bit too integrated. And before we dive deeper, I want to say I do hear the Taylor Swift influence in Olivia, but I'm not sure if it's enough to say she's a Taylor Swift copycat, or clone, or the next Taylor Swift, as some people have been saying. I see her more as a cultivation of multiple different influences. Olivia Rodrigo is much more edgier and explicit than a young Taylor Swift ever was. She also takes more sonic risk earlier on. Taylor didn't curse on record until like her 8th album. I hear a lot of Lord in Olivia sonically, especially the way she does her harmonies, and some of her songs sound like they were literally built out of the soundscapes of pure heroin and melodrama. I also think she has a few similarities with fellow Dan Nigro collaborator Conan Gray, and lyrically I do hear the Taylor influence, but her overall edginess might at times resemble the likes of Avril Lavigne or Hayley Williams more than Taylor Swift. Olivia's debut, as successful as it was, was marked with a bit of controversy as it pertains to sampling. Olivia did admittedly interpolate Taylor's New Year's Day on her song once- I remember those notebooks, bro. I, I remember I got those, like, those, I think, remember I got those type of um, notebooks in school, bro. Y'all, if y'all remember, let me know, bro. Like, I got those note. You know, I used to have those notebooks in school when I was in school and shit. Four, three steps back. Then things got even more chaotic once Taylor received a credit on Olivia's single Deja Vu to avoid getting sued. The same happened with her song Good For You in which Paramore was given a credit for its vague similarities. Although Olivia is admittedly inspired by these acts, it's hard to say if these artists actually weren't writing credits on her songs. In retrospect, honestly, I don't think they did. The chord progressions and delivery in both Cruel Summer and Misery Business can be found in a million other songs as well. But in a post-Blurred Lines music business, credits will be given out to avoid long drawn out lawsuits. And a lot of people are painting this as Olivia just blatantly copying people, but it's not unique to Olivia. Taylor Swift is also guilty of this as well. For instance, the parallels on Wildest Dreams chorus and Without You by Lana Del Rey are uncanny. Same with Starlight by Taylor and Don't Trust Me by 303, or Take Me to Church by Josier and Don't Blame Me, or even You Were Meant for Me by Jewel and The Best Day. Some of these songs which have even more similarities than Cool Summer and Deja Vu. The point is, pop music is formulated. There will always be some vague or even extremely close similarities. But not every similarity warrants our credit, but unfortunately that's the current state of the music industry. I do think Olivia is an artist that wore her influences on her sleeve through her debut effort, but I still find it unfair that she was discredited as a writer for these faulty, money-hungry songwriting royalty claims. And that's not to say Olivia's writing is faultless, because it's certainly not, but her being a young creative and having people discredit that, I think was definitely unfair. On Paramore's end, it was all the labels doing. In fact, Hayley Williams spoke out about it. It's not clear if Taylor Swift had anything to do with getting credits on Deja Vu. Although, Olivia's producer seemed to allude to something, saying, It seems like people get funny about things when songs become really popular. Olivia herself seemed to voice frustration over copying allegations, saying, It was really frustrating to see people discredit and deny my creativity. Olivia seemed to distance herself far away from the excessive fangirling in interviews, and even dodging questions about Swift. I love all your posts, I mean, you did post about... Do y'all think that, do y'all you, you think she was talking about Taylor Swift there? Cause, cause like, um, do y'all think like when she talked about the creativity, creativity, and um, and, and discrediting her, like, do y'all think she was talking about, so talking about Swift? 
do y'all think like she she she's talking about like oh like like do y'all think like do y'all think she's saying like basically do y'all think she's saying like like Taylor Swift like you don't copy her in some ways like do y'all think she's saying she's trying to say like she Taylor Swift is copying her let me know bro Taylor Swift what are the conversations like between you two when she's texting you yeah um, I mean it's so cool like to have people that you've looked up to your whole life suddenly become your peers and you know so many people yeah. are so kind to me like Billie Eilish and Halsey they're all like so sweet and it's just so nice to be you know in an industry where I feel like women can support each other yeah. when this brother's world once Rodrigo had an interview with Alanis Morissette where Alanis said there was a lot of bullying and a lot of jealousy and a lot of people who might adore my whole life being mean girls and she was talking about her rise to fame in which Rodrigo agreed and said, same. People also took notice that Taylor placed Sabrina Carpenter, the one rumored to be the blonde girl in driver's license, as an opening act on her heiress tour. Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo have not publicly interacted since the Deja Vu fiasco, which is a bit odd, and of course people would notice. They went from interacting and posting each other constantly to nothing. Now the rumors seem to have intensified with the release of Olivia Rodrigo's song, Vampire. The song is set up a bit ambiguously, you'd expect it to be about a romantic relationship given Olivia's history, but nothing in the song explicitly points to a romantic relationship in the same way that songs like Driver's License, Good For You, and Deja Vu do. Hate to give you the satisfaction asking how you're doing now, how's the castle built off people you pretend to care about? And then in the chorus she says, I used to think I was smart, but you made me look so naive. The way you sold me for parts as you sunk your teeth into me, bloodsucker, fame fuck, bleeding me dry like a goddamn vampire. Some have speculated that the lyric went for me and not her because girls your age know better is a double meaning for her romantic relationship and her rumored fallout with Taylor Swift. A source close to Rodrigo told People Magazine that it's not about her ex-boyfriend Adam Faze. The song isn't about Adam Faze, says the insider, which is kind of a weird thing to point out unless you wanted to make the actual meaning of the song more clear. Or another reasonable speculation is that this whole beef narrative could be something simply to drum up interest, a PR move. Driver's license was propelled by drama as well. That doesn't mean it isn't a relatable, well-crafted depiction of teenage heartbreak on its own, but narratives, drama, and scandals help sell the message at times. Personally, I do believe something happened behind the scenes, because the interaction on both ends went from 100 to 0. But I will say this, Olivia is a young artist, and she likely doesn't want to have her artistic identity be in the shadows of someone else. Stance can be vicious, parasocial, and delusional. There were stance I thought Olivia owed something to Taylor, and she doesn't. She's inspired by her, and it stops there. And while Olivia's trying to build her own fan base and own identity, it's probably best that she does distance herself. And she likely didn't learn the importance of that until she had the success that she had. One thing's for sure, though, Olivia Rodrigo's presence and career doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. So yeah, bro, let me know what y'all think, bro. Like, do y'all think like Taylor Swift and um Olivia Rodrigo, like, do, do they do y'all think that they really like don't like each other? Or do y'all think like people are, are like getting in their ears? Like like he say, like she say, like she say, she say type shit, bro. Like, so yeah, bro, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibes, we're just checking out you are.